Okay, it's two o'clock here in Brazil, so it's time to start. Welcome, friends uh, from all over the world. I am Flavio Battaglia, director of the Lean Institute Brazil, and I would like to welcome you to this very special session, Lean in an Emergence Department, Case Study from Brazil. It's an honor to have your audience here today. Thanks for joining. In 2017, a public and private initiative began to transform emergence departments all over Brazil. The challenge was to reduce long, long waiting times at very crowded emergence departments at public hospitals. Since then, 96 hospitals participated from 24 different states of Brazil, and we are 27 in total. And the results are impressive. A huge number of patients are being impacted nationwide, but not only the direct, the immediate results are amazing. The lessons learned seem to be a different kind of legacy for the participants. And the COVID response maybe have confirmed that. But that's what we are going to ask to our friends here today. We are very honored to host uh, the key the main brains behind the Lean as Emergencies project or Lean Emergence Department in Brazil. We have here Dr. Welfani Cordeiro Jr., the healthcare medical consultant at MV, Dr. Alison Verissimo, a faculty advisor at USCS, Andrea Saraiva, operation, operation management at the Cariri Regional Hospital, and Fabiana Alves, also from the Cariri Regional Hospitals, is a managing director of that hospital. And we also have here Paloma Rubinato, uh, who is now the head of operations for healthcare at the Lean Institute Brazil, and had the chance to be part of the uh, very special team that has started this project project here in Brazil. So I will I will start by asking Dr. Welfani. Uh, especially, what, 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 what was the problem that we were trying to solve, where you were trying to solve when you started this project, and what were the main objectives and challenges that you were facing at that moment that made you start thinking about applying Lean in the emergency departments? Dr. Welfany, please. Thanks, Flavio. Uh, I'd like to thank the Lean Institute Brazil uh, to the invitation to participate in this sensational forum. Uh, especially Paloma and Flavio, uh, and for the opportunity to present the results of the, one of the main intervention projects in the emergency department in Brazil, with results uh, recognized by several institutions in the country. Uh, Brazil has around 6,000 hospitals uh, through, throughout its territory. Uh, however, most of these hostels are small hostels. Uh, this fact makes larger hostels concentrate uh, a large part of patients uh, in a region because they are more resolute than small hostels. Uh, the concentration of patients in these hostels has caused overcrowding in areas such as emergency department, uh, intensive care units. Uh, the problem has worsened in recent years and prompted uh, the Ministry of Health to create a program to improve this situation. This program uh, was developed by a group of experts in, in emergency medicine and production engineering uh, fields, and it was named by the ministry uh, as Lean and Emergence. Uh, it's characterized by an intervention in the emergency department and in patients' areas of these hostels uh, with methodo methodologies that improve the flow of patients. At the beginning, uh, an operational diagnosis is carried out, followed by training of the, the hostile teams, and execution uh, with visits for six months by a doctor and a specialist in the process, uh, using strategies to improve the flow, such as lean, uh, carry, uh, improved communication between teams, full capacity plans, uh, full capacity protocol, uh, among others. Uh, the result of this project has been impressive and today uh, reach around uh, 140 hostels. Uh, 
throughout Brazil. Two of the project's main uh, indicators, uh, uh, indicator for overcrowded like an adult, you know, important KPI for us, and the length of stay in the emergency room have reduction around 90% uh, in the hostels, around the 50 visit. Our studies, which we intend to publish shortly, show that these results are maintained until about uh, 18 months after the beginning of the project, which is the period of uh, our follow-up with constant uh, improvement. Uh, uh, it's really a, a project that's impressive for us too. Yes, it's something that called our attention since the very beginning. And uh, in fact, what you were, what you will start doing is, is motivating other hospitals to do the same. So thanks for initiating it. And thanks for sharing the first ideas here, Dr. Welfany. I, I would like to move it a little bit. I'd like to ask Dr. Allison, um, the other part that was key to develop this program with Welfany and Paloma. Dr. Allison, please, in your opinion, what were the main challenges regarding the clinical staff? How to engage doctors, how to implement those things in an environment where we know that the doctor is an authority. And it's just quite hard to have you know, engaged in such kind of uh, projects. So, so could you please let us know, uh, how do you see this in your opinion? What, are the, what were the challenges to engage the clinical uh, staff? Well, uh, thank you for the invitation to share some knowledge in about the project about lean healthcare well that's a good question and also a very complex question so i don't think we have enough time it takes a long time to discuss about this topic but let me share about my opinion um and if i could say in one sentence our biggest challenge it could be our how to identify and treat patients in appropriate care settings that's easy to say, but that's very hard to deal in a project, an improvement project. At a glance, we have uh, a natural and artificial variability. And we, when we talk about emergency department, uh, for example, if I have a patient named Rose, and Rose is a six years old woman, and she went to the hospital and she got a uh, stroke. Uh, it's a natural variability. We don't know when she's gonna have a stroke and uh, which day, um, and she's she's not going to do a make up or to do, make appointment. Oh, I'm going to the hospital because I I'm gonna have stroke next month. So we say it's a natural variability. So um, Rosa admission was about stroke for treatment, and we say she's in a profile of patient, uh, emergency patient. And that's fine, that's how hospital works. But sometimes after the admission, um, Rose has treatment for a stroke and now they find out Rose has uh, neomycosis. And they decide to remain to stay Rose's for hospital, uh, stays longer for treatment of mycosis. That's that could be funny, that, uh, but I'm not joking. It happens in the current days. So that's a big problem for healthcare, uh, especially the public healthcare, because we call that for uh, artificial variability. And we know that prolonged hospitalization are associated with increased risk for hospital complication uh, of the patients. And we know that we have a competition between elective and emergency patients resulting in delays and cancellations, uh, decrease their quality and patient safety. And we know it, of course, increase the healthcare costs. So in my opinion, our biggest challenge and how to engage the clinical staff about this administrative interventions and how to handle the flow of the patients. And with this kind of topics, we have to have a balance about clinical decisions and healthcare costs. 
And that's not easy at all, in my opinion. To find this balance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alison. Well, I would like to move uh, to the practitioners now, the people who are doing the job at the front end. And we have uh, two very uh, important people here from um, uh, Hospital Regional de Cariri. And I would like to ask uh, for you, Andresa, and uh, also for Fabiana, uh, what, what are the main results? of this implementation? How, what, what were the impacts of this intervention in your hospital? Could you share it a little bit with us? Yeah, for sure. It's a big pleasure to be here, sharing all the great experience we'll have and we're still having with the LA project here in the hospital. I'm going to share the presentation. Just a minute, please. Well, it's a big pleasure. And I'm going to show all the great experience you're living here in the Hospital Regional of Cariri. The Cariri Regional Hospital Institution with 100% free care through the Unified Health System, called him Brazil SUS, with 302 beds, which serves high complexity in the interior of state of Sierra, almost 600 kilometers from the capital, Fortaleza. It covers a service area of 45 counties by regulating in spontaneous demand through the open door emergency, being a reference for stroke and trauma care. We started the LEAN project in July 2019 with the measures to degree of overcrowding in the emergency room and the risk of it to patients, namely NEDOPS, a chronic for national emergency Department of a Crown scale of 570S result, which indicate this overcrowding. Despite the pandemic and being a reference for serious cases of COVID, we do not return to numbers above 200, just because we kept, kept applying the tools, learning with the LINK project. We also observed a 47% decrease in the letter of stay loss of the patient in the emergency room it, without hospitalization, going from 19 to 10 hours of stay. And we still want to improve in the more. The last time with hospitalization, the result was even more expressive, a reduction of 62% going from 54 to 20 hours in our emergency room, waiting for the hospital bed. It is not worthy that during the project, there was no reduction in the number of emergency services. Engineering tools was important to get these results. We bring in the ones that most impact our culture and our numbers. First of all, the daily huddle, the moment when the next hospital discharge are evaluated. It happens three times a day with representatives from all the teams, improving communication, reduction patient discharge process and let of stay. The second one, the full capacity plan that added tasks to share the emergency overcrowding with the whole hospital, allowing everyone in the institution to involve in solving the problem of the emergency, straining everyone's commitment. In this picture, we can see our surgical observation room before and after the project. This unit was one of those that had the greatest impact with LINK project. Since then, we have had no more of a crown episodes in this unit. So this project shows us we could get better in many points. For example, decreasing of a crowding, greater organization of the sectors, improved communication between teams and process steps, Involvement of the care and support team at all stages of the service in search of improvements. The association between emergency and clinical inpatient units. Improved access for patients to the inpatient bed. Reduction of waste and costs. Here, we also highlight the support of the top leadership for the project to happen and the engagement and involvement of all teams 
through the constant encouragement of the constants who led the implementation of the dermatology methodology at the hospital. We still have many challenges, especially regarding the improvement of therapeutic plans, straining the system view of our institution's processes, and better communication between teams. In addition to the bigger challenge of straining our healthcare network in order to provide greater access for the population. The Berlin project enabled greater alignment between the hospital's processes, bringing better results for patient care based on the activity participation and teams integration, transforming the work environment in a place more organizing and better to work with the Lean culture in our institution. This picture is part of our, our great team. I'm on the left with the orange shirt. It was a big pleasure to be part. It changed the reality in our hospital. And I hope that this moment, all the world can see how Lean Project is important, especially for the emergency. This is our channels to get in touch. And um, uh, thank you, a special thank you for the two girls that are backstage helping to introduce this moment to all of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andresa. Uh, this was just one example of many hospitals that had a chance to be in touch with this knowledge and with this guys here. So I would like to move a little bit now. I'd like to ask Paloma. Paula Obama was a key person inside this project. She was, she was working in a private hospital when she was invited to help to develop this program with the public, with the government. So, and now Paloma is part of our team. We're very proud of having her with us. She's our head for healthcare now. So Paloma, as, considering this big perspective, what, what were the main challenges to implement this pro program or this project nationwide, how, how it was for you to look in a country like the size of Brazil and to figure out what, how are we going to reach these different states and these different situations that we have in a big country like ours? So yes, please sure. give us user ideas. Thank you, Flavio. Uh, we had a lot of challenges when we are working on planning and after when we are working on implementing the project. Uh, but to select one challenge to, to talk more about this, I, I, I think the most critical word to define a standard program because we needed to base it on lean healthcare concepts. We use it a lean tools and we need to do it for the whole hospitals in every part of Brazil. So, and we need to, gen to generate the expected results that we needed to, to make the overcrowded reduce. So we have different professionals that work in this project. When I was leading this project, we have almost 35 people involved. Uh, the main concern was creating a common base. We need to train all these people and we need to put it in place. And beside of this, uh, beside of this, this standard program, we, we needed to, to make um, a health environment for improving this standard program because we know that uh, a continuous improvement is a standard for Lean. So we, we have the learning when we are in the hospitals and we need to in, include and eh, update this standard in this standard program. So we need to learn it and update this standard, make all these this professionals that, that are working in this project know what we are doing and make this happen. So I think this is one of the challenges. I could mention other challenges like hire the team when we we are in the planning so we have doctors specialists around the brazil <laughs> how many how many do, how many people did you hire how many people did you contract that for 35 people when mm -hmm. i was leading the project after mm -hmm. this i think they they increased more okay almost 35 people 
and sure. we need to manage the agenda of these people too so we have the logistics of all the travels that all the people need to go to presentially in this hospital other challenge that was very important was select how was how hospitals will participate in, in these projects dr dr ralph and said that we have 140 hospitals that participated in these programs in the last three years, but we have more than 600 hospitals registered. So one of the challenges was selecting how, how was the hospital that we, we need to select to part of this one and to share the knowledge. I, I, I would select the last challenge, but not, but so important is the shared the knowledge meant because the main proposal of this project is to help Brazilian society so and the healthy and the health issue that we have it so share knowledge meant of what happened in this hospital what Andresa and Fabi did with us like this uh, is part of of this project that is how how we share how how we we show to to the world to Brazil how Lean can help the healthcare with good results. And we have a lot of good results. We have the challenge, but we have a lot of good results. So we impact in these three years, 140 hospitals. We have almost 35% in time reduction in emergency. So the indicator that Fabi did um, presented for us, the land of stay, so from arrival to discharge of the patient, we have this reduction. This reduction was responsible for decrease the, the overcrowded of the hospitals. And with this, mm -hmm. we can increase the access to healthcare for Brazilian society. So we have the challenge and we have all of these good results and dissemination of the link of every hospital was in a lot of people that was impacted with this this project and and with this movement so i'm very Great. proud to have the chance to implement it there and now lean in healthcare perfect thank you very much paloma uh, i would like to change a little bit the the angle that we're looking at because you know when a hospital or a healthcare organization when they learn those principles we strongly believe that uh, the next steps or the next move is the key. And we know that uh, you have started this project prior to the pandemic. So we didn't know that COVID-19 was coming. And uh, you probably ha are having a chance to be in touch with the hospitals that learned Lean before COVID. So I'd like to ask Dr. Welfany, uh, if he has the clue or does he know, how does these hospitals, how did they react to COVID, uh, being inspired by what they have learned during the intervention program? So how were the hospitals that were in contact, how they had in touch with these ideas, how did they respond to the COVID? Thank you, Flav. Uh, the crisis, uh caused by the, an epidemic is a crisis of increasing demand uh, along a, a period of time. The solutions to face this crisis are based on to attempt to, re, to reduce demand by reduce, uh, reduce the contamination, uh, either through contact reduction, either through mass vaccination. We are doing this. Uh, the, the world did this. Uh, on the capacity side, uh, the, main, uh, the main guideline is to reduce pressure in the most complex hostel, uh, like a, a, a disaster. I have a formation in disaster medicine. Uh, uh, you distribute uh, the less complex patients to, to other health system level. But we need to enlarge the capacity of these hostels, the, 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 the main hostels. Uh, 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 with expansion of their structure or optimization internal process. From the point of view of 
alignment and, and trying to increase capacity for this new demand, uh, hostel should try to use its resources with reduction of waste and uh, greater uh, uh, availability of beds, uh, either by improving flows or by correctly ma uh, managing its supplies using, for example, a Kanban system. Uh, since the beginning of uh, 2020, at the beginning of the, the pandemic, uh, we have helped the hostels to, to use contingency plans to adapt their capacity to this new demand caused by COVID-19. Uh, we arrived at around 300 hostels in the country, uh, some with on-site help. Alison was in, <laughs> in Amapá, it's a very <laughs> distant state in Brazil, uh, but most with distance virtual training. Uh, hostel that has already been working on the lean emergency project had less difficult to respond to the pandemic. Probably because they, they were already working uh, on improving their internal flows and managed to reduce waste before. Uh, we observed that this hostel had less difficult in adapting their response to the pandemic. Great, Dr. Welfany. This is very important. We know that re Link creates a different kind of capabilities. And we believe that the way we, we use it, I mean, when a crisis hit, is where we are going to test our best weapons. So, and I bet those hospitals are really trying to, to apply what they learned with you. And I think we have time for one more question. Um, I would like to ask Dr. Allison. Um, a question now is more related with your where your what would you sh share with the world the key highlights the key things that you've learned during this initiative during this project because part of our audience just can start some of them are in advanced in their linear journey but probably the most part of the attendees here they're looking for the first steps uh, Alison, could you give us what would you highlight as the main learnings to share with other institutions in Brazil and around? Great. So uh, I had a great opportunity to learn a lot. Uh, I say it's a, a learning on a daily basis. And I could say some highlights are in, a, in my personal perception. Uh, I went to the medical school because I want to diagnose, to treat, to heal patients. And when you leave the university, we are ready for that. We have no idea about process. We have no idea about administrative interventions. And that's very important. That's why I became a professor, because I believe it's important we change our, the mind of the new generations about this kind of sense because it's important for the patient outcome also and about the highlights concern about the project i could say you have to identify early your stakeholders and engage all your stakeholders and i say all your stakeholders not part of them and relate to clinic staff it's a different kind of stakeholders, uh, no matter if you are a nurse, if you are a nutritionist, if you are a pharmacist, if you are a manager, what we have in common is a better care of the patients. So my, in my opinion, you have to put the patient in the center because you have a lot of, of buyers, of course. So when you are negotiating your KPI, your goals of your project, the patient is better when you are relating about your results and when you are showing your project to engage your stakeholder it's not only about informing about your project you need to show your project and share your purpose because the clinical staff if they disagree your project you're gonna fail so in my opinion the key is teamwork and strong communication. Perfect. Very, very important recommendations, Dr. Allison. 
Well, unfortunately, our time is over. And I uh, would like just to say thank you very much for you again. Thank you, Andresa. Thanks, Welfoni, Paloma, Fabiana, and Alison. It, it was an honor to have you here. We know that you're very busy. So thanks for dedicating the time and the preparation for this event. And I hope that uh, our example, our case here in Brazil, in terms of what we are doing as a nation, as a healthcare professionals, could inspire more friends around the world. So thank you very much, my friend. Uh, my friends from different countries, from different regions of the world, it was an honor to have you here with us. So I invite you to join the next uh, healthcare sessions and also stay with us during the next hours. We have, some, we have I think, more than 20 hours of the event so far. So enjoy and learn and share. That's what we strongly believe. That's the key. Thank you very much, my friends and have a great rest of the day. Bye.